Thank you, Russ. Brian, again, thanks for those great comments. Let's go over to Mac. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, it's really my honor and privilege to introduce Mac McIntosh. Mac and I have known each other for well over 20 years. I can call him friend and colleague and peer and expert and consultant and just a heck of a smart guy who's about to share some uh, top trends and techniques. So with that, Mac, it's all yours. Go ahead. Thanks so much, Russell. What a great introduction. And yes, we have known each other for years and and, and, and marketing is so exciting because it keeps changing. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to talk about in, in my portion of the presentation today is what are the trends, what are the top ten trends that are affecting B2B marketing and lead generation professionals, uh, trends that they need to leverage to thrive and you know, to survive and thrive and prosper in, uh, in 2010 and beyond. So let's get right into it. First off, trend number one is that your prospects are now in control. Um, when Brian was speaking, he talked about the new buying process, self-education. Uh, the reality is they can talk to your salesperson whether they want to or not. They, they control that. And uh, so we need to, as marketers, understand that and instead of selling, help them buy. And we need to have information that addresses every stage of their buying or consideration process as they move from awareness to inquiry to consideration and purchase. Uh, or, or as, um, as, as Brian had mentioned it, from interest to learning and evaluating and justifying before purchasing. So that's trend number one and what we should be doing about it. Let's go on to trend. Uh, let's just mention, though, another point. Um, when Brian showed the sales funnel with all those different steps, what he didn't say, and I think it's really important to understand, is that the, um, the buying process isn't linear anymore. People jump around back and forth. Um, they may need to justify earlier in the process um, uh, than right before purchase. Um, and, and that means that we as marketers need to be addressing that with our content and our messaging um, so that we can, we can help them uh, through that process. So, for example, um, all marketing interactions need to carry the brand message. You can't just wait until after they've inquired. Um, you, you need to, even when you're doing the branding, to have response messaging, trying to get them to take a next step or raise their hand or move forward. Um, you need information uh, fed to them in, in, in bite-sized bits that is appropriate to where they are in the buying decision and also made available in a way that they're comfortable with. Some people may prefer to come to a webinar. Others may prefer to download the white paper. Some would like to meet right now with your salesperson to go over this, but uh, the reality is they're in control of that. So let's go to trend number two. More and more people are involved in the buying decision. Um, this research done by Marketing Sherpa back in uh, their 2008-2009 uh, uh, business technology marketing benchmark study or guide that they put out was showing that companies that have, uh, prospect companies that have 1,000 plus employees, as many as 21 people on average are involved in the buying decision. Companies that are a little bit smaller, 500 to 1,000, as many as almost 14, 13 some people involved. Even the smaller companies with 100 to 500 people have you know, six or seven people involved. So we need to find ways with our marketing to talk to all those constituents, to all those influencers, recommenders, decision makers, or decision breakers. And, and that's a trend that we need to tap into. Trend number three, accountability is back, and I think it's here to stay this time. Uh, I remember back in the 80s, accountability, I'm, I'm old enough to remember that that was a buzzword for a while. Then it kind of went away in the boom, boom times of, of the 90s up through 2001, uh, and, uh, and, and then, it, then it came back. It, it reared its, its head again when, uh, when the economy took a, a dip south about 18, 19 months ago uh, in a serious way. And... The, the CFOs and the finance people definitely want to see that there's a return on every dollar they're spending in their companies. There were folks telling them to spend every dollar like it's their last, and, and in that case, you have to be accountable. Uh, marketing has to earn its keep by proving its contribution to helping the company meet its growth and revenue goals. So in other words, yes, marketing does have to help move the sales needle um, if you want to keep your job, have a budget, and have your staff. That leads up to trend number four. Market, the marketing org chart is changing. Um, to some degree, it's additions, not necessarily replacements. But, for example, you used to have an ad manager who was in charge of taking care of your uh, 
print advertising, for example, that person's pretty much gone, and now you might need somebody like a, a marketing analyst or a content development and management person or a, or a marketing technology specialist to, to manage the web metrics and the, and the, and the uh, marketing automation system. Um, or somebody who specializes in social media marketing, acting as your presence on, on that medium, or a search engine um, optimization specialist or search engine marketing specialist. So, so the problem is um, that we need all these new skill sets in our marketing department, but we don't always get a bigger budget uh, of which to operate or our budget's flat. So that means that causes trend number five, which is marketing has to do much more than they ever did before with less, less dollars, less staff, less people to get the job done. But while they're doing, need to do much more, they need that expertise. They need uh, to be in more media using more tactics. They need more leads than before because less people are, are, um, are buying, you know, in this, especially as we come out of the, uh, the down economy, even though it's improving. Um, sales are a little bit fewer and further between. Um, companies have those smaller budgets, and uh, they definitely have less money for branding all by itself. So branding needs to be uh, an ingredient of, you know, the lead generation programs as well. So um, something else with this less, even though you've got more to do with less, is that it's caused um, some shifts in the media spending. So companies are now spending more on social media marketing, online advertising, being in online directories, doing e-marketing, e-newsletters, um, events, webinars, you know, uh, uh, webcasts, that kind of thing. And, and to fund that without necessarily getting a bigger budget, they've cut back on their print advertising and their print directories. They've, uh, they've shifted their print newsletter to an e-newsletter. They've uh, cut down the number of trade shows they're going to. So although those things still do work to a degree, there's less money to spend on them, and there's been a significant shift. Um, I can remember as little as five or six years ago, almost 70 to 80 percent of the B2B marketing budget was in trade advertising. Now I would guess that's closer to 10, maybe at most 15 percent. Why? Because they had to shift that money over to fund all these other things. Trend number six, marketers are making big bets on new media. Um, they're investing large chunks of their budget. Um, my biggest concern is that large chunks of the budget that was allocated for lead generation into social media marketing. Um, it's all the buzz. The, the magazines are talking about it. The blogs are talking about it, of course, because blogs are social media, right? So they're, 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 um, they're one of the choir. Um, and uh, um, they're, they're helping, you know, certainly social media is helping very much so with branding, thought leadership, and, and awareness, uh, but n not necessarily so much on lead generation today. Uh, everyone I ask for quantifiable evidence of any volume of leads driven through uh, social media marketing has only been able to give me anecdotal examples. And I'm not saying it's not an emerging uh, uh, tactic, but I'm saying that, you know, be careful because buzz does not equal leads. Clicks doesn't equal leads. Inquiries aren't necessarily leads. They need to be nurtured and qualified and further developed. And, and don't believe that you can do it all with inbound marketing because, in fact, uh, the best way to turn an inbound lead into an out, a sale is with outbound marketing, you know, email, uh, telemarketing, direct mail to follow up, nurture, and qualify that lead. 